study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is the second edition of Debunking the Heresy of Non-Dispensationalism, what is the everlasting gospel? Because you'll see these non-dispensational heretics, they'll run to Revelation 14, verse 6, and say, see, the everlasting gospel. And then they'll go to Galatians 1, where it talks about not preaching any other, any other gospel than what was preached by Paul. But here's what they don't do. They won't keep reading the next couple of verses where the everlasting gospel is defined. Let's read it. Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And we'll stop right there. So they say, see, the everlasting gospel. But wait a second, let's keep reading, and we'll see what the gospel is, this everlasting gospel. Saying with a loud voice, fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea and the fountains of the waters. What is the everlasting gospel? Fearing God. Worshipping him. It's not the same gospel that Paul preached. And if you want some proof on that, jump down to Revelation 14, 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark, and his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So what is it? Faith and works in the time of Jacob's trouble. You can't take the mark of the beast. So what is the everlasting gospel? If you're God, and in Revelation 14, 9 through 11, don't take the mark. The everlasting gospel is not the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ preached by Paul. So again, you'll see that they'll always have to twist Revelation 14, verse 6, and they'll never keep reading the next couple of verses. They always stop at verse 6. Because the next couple of verses define what the everlasting gospel is. Fearing God and worshiping Him. Then Revelation 14, 9 through 11, don't take the mark of the beast. So it actually debunks, the everlasting gospel actually debunks the whole non dispensational mindset, the whole non dispensational heresy, because they'll say that saints in the time of Jacob's trouble are saved and they're given eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, then how do you answer Revelation 14, 9 through 11? If, you, if anybody takes the mark, they're damned. So can they just take the mark and still be saved? And what they'll say often is that, well, no true Christian would take the mark. Okay, here's another question though. If that's the case, no true Christian would take the mark. What if a Christian knows it's the mark and takes it anyway? What if they know, okay, that's the mark, I know it's the mark, but I'm going to take it anyway, anyway willfully. Are they still saved? And they'll say, well, well, but you see, no true Christian will take the mark. That wasn't my question. My question was, if they know it's the mark and they take it anyway, are they still saved? Because again, Revelation 14, 9 through 11, if anyone takes it, they're damned. So. That's what they do. They always have to say the everlasting gospel is basically proving the gospel has always been the same. No, the everlasting gospel is defined in the next couple of verses. So the common, common deception from non-dispensationalists, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.